Welcome back, my continuously creative friends. This is day 26 of our shelter at home, joining you every day on Donna's Design Threads uh, Facebook page for our live informational time together. And today we're going to continue with our uh, learning techniques for half square triangles. So I've showed you a couple of my favorites over the last couple of days. And I found a couple of new techniques that I haven't ever really used before, but I thought they were worthwhile. And so I tried them out and want to share them with you. The first one is using, again, the charm packs, the or five inch squares, whichever one of those that you have. <clears throat> and you take the two five inch squares and put them right sides together just like we did for our other technique, but there's no marking. You don't have to mark anything. Then you simply take those two squares and do a quarter inch seam all around all four sides along the outside. So you're gonna, so basically once you sew them all together, it's sewed shut on all four sides. Then the next thing that you do is you take that and lay it down on your cutting mat and you cut diagonal. So we're going to cut once this way. Did someone get cut there? And then turn it, pick up your ruler, and cut the other diagonal corner to corner. And this is going to give us four squares for, well, they look like triangles right now. You open those up and press those, but you can see, let me just open one of these, that you get the nice half square triangle block. And so then you end up with four of them. Press them all open and you're going to press, I press again, always towards the dark side. So when I cut those out of my five inch square and I measured them up. This is a untrimmed one. It measures just over three inches, which means I can trim it to a three inch, which is going to give me a finished sewn size after I sew it into a block of two and a half inches. So a little bit bigger than a, two, you know, well, not bigger than the ones we were doing yesterday, but bigger than a two and a half. I was thinking I would only get two and a half inch squares out of these. But turns out, bonus, three inches. So trim those all up. You've got four. The thing that I wanted to tell you about these, though, is unfortunately when you're cutting the die, so your where you're cutting is going to be your outside edges, and because we cut those on the diagonal, that means we're going to have stretchy. So our the main grain of our fabric now is going across because that's where we sewed our seam was along the sides. So you're going to have stretchy sides. This can be somewhat problematic, especially if you're kind of unaware of it and you're not really sure if um, that you have that, then you're trying to put it in your block. It'd be really easy to stretch that out. So if you use this technique... I say use it with an abundance of caution, <laughs> knowing that that that's not a real stable edge when you go to put your blocks together. There are a couple of things that you can do to help make that a little bit, um, a little more stable. What I highly recommend is before you even sew these two together, is that you use some kind of starch. So this is one of my favorites, the um, Best Press, and because it comes in really fun um, scents, or you can get it unscented if you don't like the scent or you're sensitive to the scents. But this is this is one of my favorites, the citrusy one. Um, and then you would just spray it onto your block, and I would say, uh, pr you know, spray that on, press it till it dries out, and I would even do the other side. I think in this case, because you have those unstable sides. You can't use too much starch. You could even just use a regular buy it in your uh, grocery aisle spray starch. That would work fine too. Um, if you do or you, there are some recipes out there for homemade starch sprays. 
If you do use a regular starch that's made with cornstarch, then you want to make sure that you wash that quilt when you're done before you give it away or before you store it because cornstarch <clears throat> is definitely a food product and if that quilt doesn't get washed and then you go to store it somewhere for a long time, you'd have a lot more likelihood of, um, you know, critters getting into it. So um, those are my thoughts about starches and about using this technique that gives you these bias edges. Um, I, I also use, I, I, like I said, I do like the best press because it's not a, um, a corn starch in it at all. So I don't have to worry as much about washing it out afterwards. Um, I do use this a lot when I'm doing, um, quilts that have a lot of little tiny piecing because the little pieces, again, are a little bit more unstable. It just kind of helps keep your um, quilting more precise when we're talking about getting your precise quarter inch seams and stuff because it gives a little bit more stability to your fabric and it's not going to move around as much. So that's the technique of sewing your squares shut and you can play. There are some charts out there you can find that tell you what size square you want to end up finished in your block and how big to cut these squares. So there's a lot of options with that. And I really do love that you're just quickly sewn around the outside, giving it a couple of cuts and you've got a lot of squares already made. So another technique that I found was with two and a half inch strips. And again, these you can buy on rolls. We talked about charm packs being five inch squares, layer cakes being 10 inch squares. There's another type of pre-cut out there called a jelly roll. I don't know why all of these things have to be called food items. <laughs> I think it's because us quilters like to snack too. Um, so anyway, a jelly roll is, again, 42 uh, cuts of fabric that all coordinate and go together. They're usually from the same line, like the charm packs and the layer cakes. And you get 42 two and a half inch strips that are the width of the fabric. So about 40 to about 40 usable inches. So you take your two, two and a half inch strips. I think I have an extra one here. And you put them again, right sides together. I would also starch these as well before you go to sew your seams together. So you press those together. Are you... Uh, lay them together, press them, lay them together, and then you're going to stitch down all the way down one side and all the way down the other side. So again, you're going to sew this shut. This was a really, really pleasant surprise when I did this one because I'm only starting out with two and a half inches here, right? So you're going to start, we're going to cut these diagonal 45 degrees up and down each direction and end up with squares. So let me show you that. So again, you want to take a ruler that has this diagonal line, a 45 degree angle. And our first cut, we're going to cut this little triangle off on the corner. That's not going to be something usable, but it's going to give us our first 45 degree angle. So line that up with the very bottom of the fabric and into this um, corner up here. And line that 45 degree angle up right with the bottom. And then we're going to cut that off. If you're really into saving scraps, you could save that <clears throat> or you could toss it. But it, we're not going to use it for our, core, our half square triangles. Okay, so now our first cut, I think I'm going to have to flip this around. We'll just flip the whole strip. Okay, so now, again, now on this side, because first we lined up the 45 degree angle on the, what was the bottom to me. And I flipped it around. Now I'm going to do that 45 degree angle again on this side with the edge of the ruler up here at the top of the strip and give that a cut. Now, because I sewed this, you know, shut on both sides, I do have a couple of stitches right up here that we have to kind of pop open, but they're, it's real easy. Just give that a little pull. Just do that first really gently instead of doing a real hard pull. Cause again, we can, now we have a half square triangle and again, we have our edges are on the bias. 
So same thing applies uh, to that as to our squares. Where I was talking about with this, the main thing when you have a square or a block like this that the edges are all biased is that you want to be just really careful with it. Like when you go over to press these, just I would just kind of give it a little finger press and then just gently press down. Don't do a lot of pushing and moving of your iron because that's going to really distort those bias edges. So fun little block. And this again, even though I only use two and a half inch strips, I end up with a really nice size block almost I'm going to be able to trim that to a three inch block I would I would still go ahead and trim it, it ends up being like three and an eighth so I would go ahead and trim that so that is super quick and easy because if you use a whole entire width of your fabric you're going to get probably at least like 12 half square triangles out of that strip I didn't do a whole one yet to count and see but I think that's what I read somewhere so now that we have um, these blocks, our little two and a half inch strip ones pressed. I'm going to trim this into a three inch block. And I wanted to show you one more time with the block lock. So I was show sharing with you yesterday about how you can use a bigger block lock than the size that you actually need. So remember that you need to line up the groove in the corner. So you have to make sure you have that turn the right direction. Do it a little bit. Make sure this is going to be three inch side. So I'm going over the three inches just a little bit for my first trims here. Trim that one in that, that, that side. Okay, so now I'm going to line this side that I did trim. I'm going to line that up exactly on the three inch. But look what happened. This is now it's off. This ruler. So I have to turn the ruler over. So that's the important thing with the block lock if you're using it for a size that's bigger than the block that you are trimming. You have to flip the block and flip the ruler. So you have to make sure that the line that's on your seam is the one that goes to the corner, not the one below. Okay, so line that up right on the three inch. And that's it. It's all trimmed. So I was really surprised, very pleasantly surprised that out of two and a half inch strips, I actually got three inch half square triangles. So that was a lot of fun. A couple extra little techniques on the half square triangles. And that's probably going to wrap up our little mini episodes this week on half square triangles. I hope you've learned something new. I know I did. So that was a lot of fun too. And keep on being continuously creative. I will see you back here tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And we are going to do one more fun topic tomorrow on um, English paper piecing. Might have to work on my English accent for that episode. It'll be fun. I hope you guys will join me tomorrow at 2 o'clock on the Facebook at Donna's Design Threads. Stay continuously creative and have a great Thursday. Bye.